are listening to the Healthy Christian Women Podcast. Brought to you by Fit Plus Faith, the podcast for Christian women to grow healthier in their mind, body, and spirit. Jumpstart your health with your complimentary mind, body, and spirit detox checklist at healthychristianwomen.com slash detox. That's healthychristianwomen.com forward slash detox. Here's your host, Dr. Melody Stevens. Hello and welcome to the Healthy Christian Women podcast. I am your host, Dr. Melody Stevens, and this is episode 17, Breaking Free from Comparison. What an important thing that we need to talk about because how easy is it to get caught in that trap of comparison? We do it all the time. And I I just wonder, where is it coming from? Is it something culturally that we see um, as it could be, it could definitely be maybe the influences of marketing and of commercials and different things that are always trying to basically make us feel like what we have is not enough, who we are is not enough. There is constant, you know, development of something new. And, and so we always want to be in the know and it can really get to the point though, where it's crossed over from not just desiring something different or new, but going to the point of now you're actually beating yourself up about it, or you're being um, self-deprecating and feeling as if you are not enough, if you don't have the latest thing, if you don't look like what the magazines are showing for people to look like, all these different things. And it can really go to this place of extreme negativity. And that feeds into depression. It feeds into anxiety and never feeling good enough. But when we look at the Bible, is that what God says? Is that who he says we are? Is that what he says this life is about? about looking for the next biggest and greatest thing and of trying to fit into some mold out there that he has for us? No. We look and see that God celebrates the diversity of his creation, the diversity in all of us being an extension of what he has created in the world. And so we really need to be aware, are we getting pulled into the lies and the traps of comparison that can be so detrimental. They can be so evil, even to a point, Um, mean to ourselves and really allowing the devil to get a foothold because he, he knows that that area might be a weakness for you. And so then it just plays over and over and over in your head. And this is why we have to be so careful. We have to be so mindful and so aware of what are we allowing into our life through what we're seeing and through what we're hearing and what we're, you know, the presence of the people that we are putting ourselves in the company of, because all of those things are going to feed into this idea of comparison or not. If you're putting yourself in the presence of people that are not in that mindset and are pursuing their relationship with God and desiring to be the unique creation that he's created them to be and therefore encouraging you to do the same, that's the type of thing that you want to be a part of and really looking and seeing, am I coveting other people? Am I coveting their body? Am I coveting their looks? Am I coveting what they have? And that is ultimately not of God. (laughs) He doesn't want us to covet. It's one of the Ten Commandments that we are not to covet. And I feel like coveting is the basis of comparison. And God plainly says that is not for us to do. That is not for us to compare. That is not for us to judge. He is the judge. He is the judge of what is good and what is bad. And we are good. We are good in his sight. We are his good and beautiful creation. We are already enough. We are already past the seal of approval in his eyes. There's nothing else that we need to do or be 
or look like in order to gain his love and acceptance. So really getting back to the basics, if you are getting caught in that, or maybe you have moments where you're getting caught in that and just realizing that for the lie that it is, the blatant lie that it is, it is not for you to feel that way about yourself. It is not for you to look at others and desire what they have more than desiring intimacy and closeness with God in your own life. And so I wanted to just examine a few scriptures this morning about different things that the Bible is telling us when it comes to comparison and when it comes to how God is viewing comparison to help us really realize that these feelings, that these thoughts and this way of life and the culture that feeds into that is not of God, and we are meant to protect ourselves from that. So let's head first to one of the main passages in the Bible that literally makes it completely clear as day, completely black and white when it comes to judging others, the game of comparison, and how we are to handle it, and what our godly perspective on this should truly be. So in Matthew chapter 7, verses one through three, it says, judge not that you not be judged for with that judgment that you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. So it's basically saying, do not judge others because by the way that you judge others is the same way you will be judged. So we really need to take a look at that. And then it says, and why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look, a plank is in your own eye. You hypocrite, it says, verse five, first remove the plank from your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. So it is so easy for us to look around and judge others. And we do this for a few reasons. One of them being that it won't, we want to make ourselves feel better. So we want to judge others and compare ourselves against them in order to make ourselves feel better to say, well, see, you know, they have this flaw. They have this imperfection. Therefore, I'm okay. That's one way that we can do it. Or another one saying, well, look at how you know perfect they are or how perfect this situation is, or we lay out all these criteria, you know, look at X, Y, and Z and how they measure up, and therefore I do not measure up to that. Therefore, I find my value and my worth in that, so I'm not measuring up to it, so therefore I am not worth anything. I am worthless. So being able to look at these two different ways of how we are perceiving our judgments on others and the warning that says, don't be a hypocrite. By the way you are judging others, you will also be judged. And I struggled with this for a long time, man. And and it's embarrassing to say, but I just need to be honest about it. Being in the medical field and being a healthcare professional and being a health coach and helping other people with their health man, I would judge myself. I would judge other people, other people's programs, other people's systems. And and really all it was doing was bringing me down. All it was doing was making me feel less than and finding ways to make myself feel a little better than other people. Oh, look, you know, I, I don't have to beat myself up over carrying around these few extra pounds because, you know, there's other people that are carrying around, you know, over a hundred extra pounds. So therefore I'm okay, or I'm better than we need to be so aware and so careful of this. And when I, but then I realized, but I am going to be judged in that same way. So it wasn't until I released the judgment from other people that I actually released the judgment upon myself. And that is so freeing. That is so freeing because God is the righteous judge, but we can praise him as well that he is not judging us on our appearance like we tend to do. He is not saying 
this person because of their appearance or because of their weight or whatever is therefore more worthy or less worthy of my love, of my healing, of my repentance and my forgiveness and my grace and mercy. Thank you, God, that that is not the way that you judge us. You judge us by our heart. And one day you will make all the wrong things right. You will one day pay for the evil that is being done. They will pay. In your righteous judgment, they will pay. In the righteous penalty, they will pay. We don't have to worry about it. We don't have to be the one to give out the judgments. We were never meant to. We were meant to love God, to receive his love for us, to share that love with others, to forgive others as he has forgiven us, which we talked about in a few episodes ago. That is our job, to love and to forgive, to treat our neighbor as ourself. He is the one that will one day right all the wrongs and repay all the evil that has been done with the righteous and proper judgments that that is deserved. But that is not our job. And we can just thank him that it is not our job because we are not equipped to handle it correctly. And so we need to just be aware of this. How can you set yourself free? Break the chains of this bondage. If this is, if this is a place where you are struggling, realize that it's lies Realize that the enemy is coming in and seeing your weaknesses and your insecurities and feeding upon them and break the chains in Jesus' name. That is the power that you have. We are not meant to live under bondage and under judgment in this way. And so if that is a problem for you, really take a look at these verses that says, by the way I'm judging others, I am also going to be judged. Do I want that kind of judgment on myself? Heck no. So I need to stop judging others. And also, I am judging them for a speck in their eye when I may have a complete plank in my eye. So metaphorically saying, look at that one tiny flaw with them when I may have a completely and even bigger flaw that I am choosing to be blinded to and not address to make myself feel better for my insecurities and my feelings of unworthiness, and therefore I'm casting judgment on this other person. That keeps us in bondage. We are not meant to be in bondage. I want to go over to Galatians 5.1, which we talked about in the previous episode. If you have not yet listened to that one, it was the episode I made right after coming off of our first wellness retreat, and it was so incredible. And so you've got to listen to that. But Galatians 5.1 is the main verse that we talk about there And it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. It is for your freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Comparison is slavery. Comparison makes us slave and toil to no avail. We will never fully meet up to that expectation, or if we do, it will be short-lived and unfulfilling. We were not meant to live in that way. We were meant, and Jesus died for our freedom, not for us to try to fit into a mold that is not meant for us. So I want you to receive this word today, receive this freedom today, that you are better than comparison You are better than it. God has more for you. God wants to fulfill you and fill your life up to where comparison has no part in it whatsoever. The only marker is his standard and his love. That is what we are desiring to live. And you need to be aware of it and you break the chains of it. Cast it out. Call it out. Tell the enemy that he no longer has a hold of you in this way. Because Christ died for your freedom to be free from all bondage, from all sin, from all hypocrisy, from all inadequacy. We are inadequate. We are never going to be able to be completely righteous in God's eyes, which is why Jesus died for us. 
for all of us, for mankind, so that when God looks at us, he sees his perfect son. It's not that we have done anything to eradicate our own incapacity. It's that he covers us then and forgives us. And then when he looks at us, he sees his perfect son. So Jesus is the one that gives us the freedom. It is not anything we could do. But when we realize that we may have been caught in some of these things, we need to wise up to it, no longer be in the dark about it, call it out for what it is, put on the armor of God, cast the enemy out, repent if you need to, if the Holy Spirit convicts you, receive forgiveness for this, and begin to live anew without this bondage in your life. I want to head over to Galatians 1.10 that says, For am I now seeking the favor of men or of God? Am I striving to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a bondservant to Christ. Meaning we cannot serve both. Right? The Bible tells us that we cannot have two masters. We are serving one thing or the other. We cannot serve men and God. We cannot. And so I love this verse. What am I doing? Am I seeking the favor of men? Is that what you're doing in your comparison? Trying to seek the favor of your peers, of your parents, of your leaders, of your teachers, of whoever it might be, are you trying to win someone's favor? We need to look at that and say, the only one whose favor I am trying to live up to is God's favor. And what's so beautiful about that is that it's already freely given. You don't even have to do anything. So therefore, what stops there? The striving. No more striving, no more struggling, no more trying to do more and be more. You are already enough as you are right now with all your flaws and all your imperfections. How beautiful when we finally realize that and allow it to actually change you. You do not need to live up to the expectations of anyone else. God has already accepted you and loves you and desires to give you freedom and eternal life. We can finally stop striving. Stop trying to impress other people. We are already perfect in God's eyes. That is freedom. That is freedom. To not have to impress anyone. To be able to be who you are. To be able to be who he created you to be, knowing he cannot love you any more or any less than in this moment. Receive that today. That is grace. So beautiful. And the last thing I want to go to is in 2 Corinthians, looks like, chapter 10. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 12. We're going to go verse 12 and then verse 17 and 18. It says, For we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves. But they, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. But he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. For not he who commends himself is approved, but whom the Lord commends. I love this. So some of these words can get a little bit hairy. You know, I'm reading uh, from the New King James. So sometimes it can get a little bit wordy. But basically the premise there being, we do not need to compare ourselves with others who are, who are doing that. We don't need to be caught in that trap because they are, they are making their own rules of measurement. It says they are measuring themselves by themselves. Okay, so we can look at culture, for example. 
culture is measuring itself, has a certain standard of measurement for what is acceptable or good or whatever. They're making their own level of measurement. (laughs) So they're measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves, which is exactly what we see. They're comparing themselves among themselves in this twisted level of what is correct, of what is appropriate and acceptable. But that is not God's standard. We do not need to be caught up in that. It says they are not wise, (laughs) plain and simple. They are not wise. May our desire to be wise in God's eyes, to have godly wisdom, godly discernment, and using the power that God gives us to break any of these lies. It says, but he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. So what are you going to be boasting in? Let us boast in the Lord, not in our achievements, not in our looks, not by the standards that society or culture or other people have made for us. Let us glory in the Lord. And this is taken from Jeremiah chapter nine. That's what he's quoting there. So let me see if this will pull up for me. Jeremiah 9, 24, actually, I think it's verse 23 where it starts. It's such a beautiful passage. So Jeremiah chapter 9, 23 and 24, it says, Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these I delight, says the Lord. That's a word from Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. I love it. It's saying, do not boast in yourself. Do not compare yourself to others when they may be boasting in themselves and in their riches and in their strength and in their wisdom. That is not what we're wanting, though. He says, but him, let him who glories, who if you're going to boast in something, glory in this or boast in this, that you understand and know God. So beautiful. I want to boast that I know God, that I understand Him, that He is my standard, that He is the one who loves me like no one else can. I no longer have to strive and compare and try to be anything other than who He already created me to be in this moment. It says, let he under that he understands and knows me that i am the lord exercising loving kindness judgment and righteousness in the earth we are not the ones that need to cast judgment that is god's job that is god's domain we are not equipped to do that and to do it correctly He is loving, his loving kindness, this amount of love and compassion towards us. Do we know that? Are you experiencing that part of God? If not, then most likely you're holding yourself back from the love that he desires you to know. So it says that I am the Lord exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. God is the righteous judge. God is the righteous and almighty one who deserves all of our praise and all of our adoration that we are to boast in him, not in ourselves, not in our achievements, not in our works, not in our looks, Nothing. We are to boast in him, in what he has done, who he is, what his power and might can do, 
and how he is the one transforming your life. That is what we boast in. We can boast all the more in those things because God is the one deserving of it all. So I hope that this word just encourages you today, thinking about where might you be caught up in comparison and remembering that the way you are judging others is the way you will be judged. And do you want that? I don't. That was a big wake up moment for me. I was like, my goodness, I, I, I don't want to be judged like this. I'm so harsh and critical to others. That is not the way that I want others to judge me or God to judge me. So therefore, I need to cut it out. I need to realize that there is no place in my life and in my heart for judgment. I don't need to compare myself to them. God is already the one who has given me all the validation that I need. If I know that I am following him and I am seeking and yearning after him, he sees my heart and knows I no longer have to even worry about what anybody else is doing in business, in life. None of it matters anymore. It's so beautiful. It's so freeing. None of it matters. The only thing I need to be accountable to is my relationship with him. And when I can begin to receive and realize the amount of love and acceptance that he has for me in all of my flaws in all of my imperfections, that he loves me to the point that he died for me to live with him. I have absolutely no room to judge anyone or to compare myself to anyone. All I have is even more compassion for them, even more desire for them to come to know that kind of love, that kind of acceptance. So therefore, my judgment, it was so beautiful when that left me. And I just realized, I don't need any of that. If I am being true and following what God is leading me to do and accepting who I am right here and now, I all of a sudden began to accept my body. I I no longer was looking at others with envy. I may desire to still make changes in my body. I may still desire to lose some more pounds and to tone up and this and that, but it's no longer coming from a place of having them approve of me. It's now coming from a place of, I want to do it because it's going to make me feel good. It's going to make my body feel good. It's going to increase my confidence, but no longer being worried that I'm trying to impress anyone anything. It's gone. All of that is gone because I already know that I'm loved and accepted exactly how I am if I never even changed anything. And the same is for for you. Let us break free from the bondage of comparison and run this race with you and God. That is it. Running towards him, pressing into him, Letting him break these chains off of you. Take these heavy yokes off of you. Being fully loved and accepted by him and him alone. The rest is icing on the cake. When you get to feel love and acceptance from those close to you, that's beautiful. But that should never take the place or be more important than your love and acceptance already in Christ Jesus. And when you get to that point, then you can freely love others with with abandon because you desire them to experience and know that same thing. You desire them to know that amount of love that the Father has for them. You desire them to be free from the bondage of comparison. That is so freeing and so important. I feel like more than ever in the history of the world, It is more important now more than ever because of the social pressures, because of social media, because of what our society continues to promote. And all that does is feed into um, insecurity and feeds into this comparison monster that makes us not feel good enough, that makes us feel shame 
for being who we are, for looking how we do. That is not what God has for you. That is absolutely contrary to what the Bible says about you and who you are. You were made beautiful and perfect in his image. That is the only thing that should matter. And when you begin to let your heart be transformed and realize that to a deeper and deeper level, everything will change for you. So beautiful. So I wanted to share that with you today. I really hope that that speaks to your heart today. May the Holy Spirit continue to be showing us how we can continue to grow closer to God and break these chains that we don't need. We absolutely don't need. Not only do we not need them, they're literally pulling us down. They're literally suffocating us. And that is not the life of freedom that God intends for you. Man. All right. That is our word for today. I wanted to let you know, depending on when you are listening to this, if you are listening to this, Before April 30th, 2018, when this is first released, then there is still a totally amazing special pricing deal for my Beautiful You program. This program will still be around long after that, but if you're listening to it now, then this is when during this week, there is special pricing that will expire April 30th of 2018, where you'll still get Uh, discounts, $100 off and a 15% off if you go to the VIP program. So what the Beautiful You program is, if you have not heard of it yet, it is my deep dive heart transformation program. This is where when you're ready to go to a deeper level, like what I'm talking about here, ready to really examine these things in your life, examine your thoughts, examine your upbringing, examine the things that have maybe molded your thinking and created different habits in your life that are not beneficial for you. When you're ready to really do some deeper level work in your mind and in your heart, then that's what I've created this program for. Because what I've realized from helping people all these years with their body and with their health is my goodness, if we do not deal with the mindset things, the mental things, our past, our upbringing, all these different things, if we do not look at that and examine that, then we are never going to fully be able to break free ultimately. Like we were talking about, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. But so often we can be stuck in some things that we don't even realize is actually underneath the surface holding us down. So it's a really, it's an awareness program. It's really helping you begin to realize all the other things that have gone on that have led to being in a place where maybe you're not happy with yourself. You're not happy with your body. You're not happy, happy with the state of your mind or with your, with your intimacy, with your relationship with God. Maybe you're a little bit lost in your purpose. You know, we go through spiritual gifts and helping you find what you're really good at and who God has created you to be you special and uniquely for you and how having our healthy body and having our healthy mind and our healthy relationship with God plays into you being able to fully step out and become who he created you to be. But so often we are, we're under so much weight, so much baggage that we're struggling to break free from. So I created this program to help you begin to examine those things and look at those things and and move forward in breaking those chains with God on your side in the name of Jesus, being able to break those chains and to fully step into the beauty and the fullness of who he created you to be already. And so that is called my Beautiful You program. It is an open enrollment program, meaning it is there for you when you are ready to do that deeper work. It's, it's a six-week program, and but you have lifetime access. You can literally go through in your own timeline. No pressure there of, of completing it in a certain amount of time. You can take as long as you need to as God works in your heart as you work through the different modules that I have there, the different activities and um, and really just helping you reflect and be able to dig deeper 
and um, receive a greater levels of, of freedom um, that God has for you ultimately. And so that's called my beautiful you program. You can learn more information about it at bit dot L Y. So B is in boy, B I T dot L Y slash beautiful you all one word, all capitals. If you don't type beautiful you all capitals, it's going to take you to some other funny website. I think it's going to be like a, I don't even know, like a women's clothing magazine or something. So when you're typing that in bit.ly dot L Y slash beautiful you all capitals, then you can learn about that program. And, um, there is a standard program like the six week program that I've laid out there for you. And there's the VIP option for when you're wanting more one-on-one support and you're wanting more, um, mentoring and, and some, you know, coaching and really kind of helping you have that supportive piece so that you're not going through it alone. It also has um, a private Facebook group ongoing a support group as well. That is lifetime access to that as well. So a lot of amazing uh, perks there. And of course I wanted to just really help you out and, and give you a hundred dollars off. That's going to be valid only until April 30th of 2018. So that is all I have for you today, ladies. I love you and God loves you and wants to see you breaking free from these chains as well. That is his whole purpose. He's given us everything we need in order to do that. And we were meant to be the body of Christ and support one another and help to facilitate that in each other's lives. And so uh, that's why I love doing this podcast for you. I love the Healthy Christian Women Facebook group that we have, just seeing the, the women doing exactly that, supporting and encouraging one another. And that is also why I created the Beautiful You program to really help facilitate going deeper when you know uh, that it's it's not just a surface level stuff that needs to be dealt with for you to have true breakthroughs. It's really going to that deeper level. And so I want to help facilitate you in any way that I possibly can that God inspires me to in order to help you step forward, breaking the chains of comparison and fully walking and living in the freedom that Christ died to give you. All right, ladies, have a wonderful rest of your day. Blessings upon you in Jesus' name. Bye. Thanks for listening. Remember to subscribe and join me next week for the next episode of the Healthy Christian Women Podcast. Inspiring Christian women to live healthier in their mind, body, and spirit. One day at a time. Grab your complimentary mind, body, and spirit detox checklist at healthychristianwomen.com slash detox. That's HealthyChristianWomen.com forward slash detox. detox.